Hello folks and welcome to another video. In this one I'll be having a look at the Razer software suite. So the primary things that come with Razer's software suite are Razer Axon which enables you to set you uh, dynamic backgrounds and whatnot from a choice that they give. Um, it works well but the backgrounds aren't for me so I don't tend to use it but it is a good piece of software if that's for you. There's also Razer Cortex which is more about optimising your games and convenience and Razer Synapse which is more to do with dealing with the hardware. So if we come out of this and if we go into Razer Cortex <coughs> what you'll see is um, you can put all your games in here from all the different services you'll say which games you played and whatnot um, and you can go on here on platforms uh, in games so you can have a custom display uh, gameplay time, all that sort of thing. I don't use that, I tend to use Steam for that. Um, and you can also do remote play. I haven't tested remote play yet, uh, it's in beta, but I haven't tested it as of yet. It has a game booster function, which will disable background apps and all that sort of thing. Um, it's best to leave this as default, essentially. You don't want to disable anything that's actually going to cause issues for you when trying to um, play your games. It also has a thing called Booster Prime, this is where they've um, put specific profiles in place for specific games that are meant to make those games run better. Uh, so it will basically do the settings for you, much like what NVIDIA's um, app will do as well. Next we have System Booster. Now the idea of this is, as it says here, is to clear things like application junk files, game junk files, registry, things like that. Um, so let's go ahead and do a scan, see what it comes up with. So there's a lot of entries apparently in the registry that don't necessarily need to be there anymore. So uh, let's go ahead and clean them. There we go. Doesn't free up a ton of space, but we might as well do it. So you've got speed up here as well. Um, this is where it's supposed to essentially speed things up for you when you're playing your games. But the thing is, when you start a game up, it will do most of this stuff anyway. Um, and that helps to make your games run better, or at least that's what it's supposed to do. Defrag, nothing to be done here because, as it says, we're on an SSD, so you don't defrag an SSD, so that's fine. You do trim on an SSD, which is different. Windows takes care of that itself. It will also tell you all the information about your rig, how much RAM you've got and whatnot, uh, which CPU you're using, all that sort of thing and you can go down and it will tell you basically everything you need to know about your system. There you go. See, it's got one part of the storage on there. It doesn't seem to have picked up my second um, SSD. Uh, and it's got that wrong. My TV is definitely not 72 inch, although that would be pretty cool if it was. But this is more of a Cool thing to have, but not really essential. You've got a deals section, um, but again, um, this can be good for getting some deals and stuff and whatnot, uh, but uh, I tend to just go straight on Steam myself. Uh, you've got giveaways, um, nothing usually on there that I'm particularly interested in. Razer Gold, which is their uh, version of crypto, essentially. Uh, this will show all the games um, that you could buy if you wanted to through here. Um, you get your wish list, bundles, there's rewards. Um, again, it's mostly sort of to do with crypto, which I'm not massively interested in. It, it can uh, shorten the lifespan of your devices, so I'm not interested in that. And of course, add-ons, which will be uh, primarily things to enhance your gaming experience, including hardware. So it's a good piece of software in general, um, and it does a pretty decent job of freeing up some RAM to help with your gaming, uh, as well as freeing up CPU time. Although it's worth saying, when you've got 32 gigs of RAM, it's not really essential. So, But it's a good piece of software um, in general, and um, it's not overly bloaty in terms of how much data it uses and whatnot either. So next we move on to Razer Synapse. Now, Razer Synapse is uh, what basically um, controls your hardware. So if you were to, you can change settings such as having keys do multiple different things. Um, you can put a gaming mode onto it. I tend to leave that always. No, actually I don't want that on because sometimes I need to open the windows, press the windows key in order to actually get out of um, 
So you've got different lighting modes and whatnot that it can use. And you can change essentially all of that here. So if we go on lighting here, you can change um, which mode you want it on. There's a lot of different modes. I just tend to leave it on spectrum cycling, so I think that looks cool. Um, you can also make it turn itself off. Um, but it still tends to use quite a bit of power even when it's in standby, so I'd recommend using the switch on the back to turn it off properly. And of course you can do the same for the mouse, you can have, you can do performance settings. I tend to not want it super high, but you can um, type in there what settings you want, and that will help to actually um, get it exactly how you like it. Um, I do have to reset this every so often, which is quite annoying, um, to be so that it knows what surface I'm using. Um, it'd be better if I didn't have to do that, but... There you go. So it's only a minor thing, as well as you can, of course, toggle power settings and whatnot as well. And anything you purchase from Razer, once installed, will show up on here. Okay, there we have it. Although the mouse just seems to have dropped out suddenly. Um, it doesn't normally happen. Uh, you can set as gamer room settings, so if you have multiple devices, you can sync up all the colours and whatnot. And there's different modules you can connect to it. Um, that enable you to have macros running or Philips Hue or to just um, have it linked up to your Alexa. So I suppose the question is, is this software worth it? Well, if you have a lot of um, Razer software, I'd say this is definitely worthwhile to have. Um, or if you have a lot of Razer hardware. Of course, if I just connect up my headphones to this as well, which I'll show you briefly now. So if we click on them, you can then choose between stereo and spatial audio. I quite like it in stereo. And then you can come down. Some of the games um, that I've got installed, for example, Doom, will have a little THX symbol there. If you then go on their THX immersive mode, it actually makes the game sound even better. So carry on scrolling down. Most games don't have THX modes, um, so I tend to just leave them to follow the existing EQ, but you can change them all to game um, if you want, but you have to do it one at a time which can be a bit annoying. But um, at the moment, Doom is the only game I think I've got installed that actually has that. Um, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 has it as well. Um, obviously, it's not gonna be as good as having um, discrete speakers, but um, it does a good job and you can adjust all these various different settings as well as enhancements. For example, um, these actually vibrate on your ears when there's loud sounds and that. Um, you've got all these different settings here, very useful. I don't tend to use a mic, but there's a lot of settings there that are useful. This does have lighting on it, of course, I can't see it when it's on my head, but um, it's cool to be able to change those settings. And of course, your standard power settings and a THX demo, um, which actually worked quite well to show off how well the sound works in the game. So is this software that you, you need? Like I said, if you use a lot of Razer hardware, which I'm quite heavily into the Razer ecosystem, this software is very, very useful for me, and it's good to have all these, all my different devices basically under one uh, umbrella. Also, the software is quick um, and doesn't really cause any issues in terms of startup speed and whatnot. The only thing I wish they would put in is to have the firmware updates actually done through the uh, Razer software instead of having to, for example, come on here, find your exact one, because there's quite a few Black Widow versions here, so you have to go find your one download the update, uh, it doesn't always work properly, um, and then you can do the update like that. Um, I think it'd be a lot better if it was just integrated into here, um, and you wouldn't have to do any of that searching around. But overall, um, that's just a minor complaint really. Um, it's easy to update the software, everything works pretty well, um, I don't really have any issues with it at all, so I'm pretty happy with the software. So out of 10, I would give this software probably an 8. Um, it does have the old thing, like I said, where it forgets settings, for example, on the mouse, I'd go on to calibration um, and it would forget and put it back on default. Um, not, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it is better um, to be able to actually just use the exact one that it's meant to be for, but that will forget it occasionally. So yeah, about an eight out of 10 for the software. Um, and of course, um, if you use the headphones, you can actually use THX Spatial Audio, which uh, Razer now own. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please remember to hit that like button, leave me a comment, subscribe to my channel, and share this video on your socials. Also, feel free to check out my Patreon. I'd like to thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.